we've taken a detailed look at all components required for a complete FPV setup. Now it's time to bolt them all together. Welcome to Ifty's Tech Corner where today I'll be taking you through the steps to setting up a complete FPV system. We've taken a close look at the components required in a previous video. I'll leave a link at the end of this video or in the description box below in case you missed it. So let's get stuck straight in with the installation. We'll begin with the transmitter side of the equation first. Although users are able to attach components to the belly of the craft for a quick and easy install, in this particular setup we'll be going for an internal install to maintain a completely neat and tidy external look. We begin by removing the battery and all propellers from the craft. Proceed to turn the Phantom over. In order to remove the four crosshead screws from the very end of each arm, along with the three hex screws within each arm using a standard 2mm hex bit. Those who are installing the DJI iOSD Mini can proceed to remove the canvas module from the leg of the Phantom by releasing the four tiny crosshead screws, and then unplugging the ribbon cable from the module itself. Take care to remove the dark coloured canvas module and not the compass, before proceeding to turn the Phantom back onto its feet. Carefully cut the stickers if they are installed to save having to unpeel them and proceed to remove the top cover of the Phantom, taking care to unplug the GPS cable before completely removing the top cover. Before we go any further, carefully clip the corresponding zip tie to pull through the canvas cable previously unplugged and plug back into the canvas before placing to one side. As we are using a plug and play cable available from firstpersonview.co.uk, we have no need to solder any wires whatsoever. Therefore, we can remove the FPV cable already attached to the Phantom by pulling it through the landing gear and unplugging it from its connector labelled CAM. Feed the plug and play cable through the same hole as the cable just removed, far enough so that only the power and video connectors for the transmitter remain below the craft and proceed to plug the end of the cable back into the port labelled CAM. And finally plug both the power and video cables now under the craft into the transmitter itself. You are now free to stick the transmitter onto the craft in your desired location. If attaching in this location, bear in mind you will need room to install the antenna and take care not to install in the centre since this will make removing the battery very difficult. Installation of the transmitter is now complete and those who are not installing the DJI iOSD Mini can proceed to attach the top cover. Installing the DJI iOSD Mini is another straightforward affair. Plug the connector from the iOSD Mini into the canvas module we previously moved from the landing gear and plug the middle connector from the plug and play cable we used to connect the transmitter to the phantom board into the side of the iOSD itself. And that's all there is to it. Installation of the DJI iOSD Mini is complete. Before we go any further, it's a good idea to update the iOSD firmware so we are running the latest version. To do this, connect the USB cable supplied with your Phantom to the USB port on the iOSD Mini. Before applying any power to the Phantom, it is very important to attach an antenna to the transmitter since switching the Phantom on with no antenna attached will burn out the transmitter and render it useless. Connect the USB cable to your computer and power up the Phantom. From this point, updating the iOSD Mini is a relatively straightforward process using the iOSD Assistant available on the DJI website. Once complete, switch off the Phantom, remove the USB cable from the iOSD Mini, and remove the battery along with the transmitter antenna if you wish. Using a 3M sticky pad, secure the iOSD Mini into the craft at your desired location and use zip ties to neaten up the cables if you prefer. Once complete, reattach the GPS cable before lowering the top cover in the same orientation using the stickers as a reference point before replacing all 12 hex screws and the four crosshead screws. The craft side of the installation is now complete. We can now test the setup before going any further. Note that before switching the Phantom on, always remember to have a GoPro secured in place within the Zenmuse gimbal and always, always remember to attach the antenna to the transmitter if it's not already in place. At this point, users are safe to switch on the GoPro and power up the Phantom. 
with the included antennas attached to the FlySight Black Pearl monitor, which we looked at in the previous video, we are now able to switch the monitor on. And ensuring we are using band F, we receive a video feed from the GoPro. It's a good idea to attach the monitor hood to the monitor itself, which simply snaps into place. And we are then able to either place the monitor onto a tripod for hands-free operation, or for an even neater and more portable solution, we can use the Rave Creative controller mount, which snaps securely into place, to hold the monitor firmly into position on the controller itself. A final optional step is to remove the antenna from the Phantom, taking care to ensure it's powered down beforehand, and replace it with the upgraded Spironet antenna, while doing the same with one of the monitor antennas. This should provide clearer image quality at longer distances. And there we have it, the complete Phantom 2 FPV setup, all enclosed in a neat overall internal install. Excuse the interference from my recording equipment, but notice the extra information overlaid around the monitor itself. This is all provided by the DJI iOSD Mini and comes in very handy indeed. Users are now able to line up and capture creative shots with ease.